Hi, I'm Tom Reed, and here's an overview of our paper recently published in the Journal of Animal Ecology, titled Phenological Mismatch Affects Individual Fitness but Not Population Demography in a Woodland Songbird. Co-authored by myself, Marcel Visser at the Netherlands Institute of Ecology, Wageningen, and Stephanie Genevrier at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. Phenology is the study of the seasonal timing of important biological events and the annual routines of organisms, such as the timing of migration, the timing of hibernation or dormancy, or indeed the timing of breeding. As a result of recent climate change, many organisms are shifting their phenology. In temperate regions of the Northern Hemisphere, for example, where regional climates are strongly seasonal, many animal and plant species have advanced their timing of reproduction to earlier in spring in line with rising temperatures. However, the species within a given community do not necessarily respond to climate change at the same rate. For example, predators often time their breeding to coincide with that of their prey, to ensure an abundant supply of food for provisioning their offspring. But if the breeding time of prey responds faster to climate change than does the breeding time of predators, this can lead to a mismatch but the demographic and evolutionary consequences of mismatch remain poorly understood. We studied the fitness consequences of phenological mismatches in great tits. Great tits are small to medium sized songbirds that breed in forests and urban habitats across Eurasia. Researchers from the Netherlands Institute of Ecology have been studying great tits at various sites throughout the Netherlands for many decades. In this study, we analysed 37 years of data from a long-term population study at the Hogevelo National Park. Several hundred nest boxes have been erected on trees in the park. During the breeding season, the nest boxes are visited at least once per week, and the number of eggs or chicks present is noted. From this information, it is possible to accurately determine lane dates for all breeding females, as well as clutch size and the number of chicks fledged. Chicks and adults are also ringed, allowing reproductive success and survival to be calculated for a large sample of known individuals every year. During the breeding season, great tits rely heavily on caterpillars of various species to feed their chicks. Caterpillars are only available for a short period of a few weeks each summer, however. In the 1980s, great tit females in our study population typically laid their eggs at a time that maximised overlap between the time when chick food requirements are highest and the timing of the caterpillar food peak. The caterpillar food peak is highly sensitive to temperature changes in late spring, which have increased steadily since the 1980s. As a result, the food peak has advanced by almost three weeks. Great tit lane dates, on the other hand, are sensitive to temperatures in early spring, which have not increased at the same rate in this region of the world. Consequently, the rate of advancement in lane dates has been much slower than that of the food peak leading to a steadily increasing mismatch between the phenology of great tits and the phenology of caterpillars. The goal of this study was to characterise the fitness consequences for great tits of this mismatch at two levels. The individual level, that is the within-year effects of mismatch on the reproductive success and survival of individual females, and the population level, that is the between-year effects of average population mismatch and population level demographic rates. This graph shows the frequency distribution of the number of fledglings produced per individual female per year, pooling the data from all 37 years. One obvious attribute is that many females each year produce no fledglings. We found that the probability of producing zero fledglings shows a strong quadratic relationship with individual mismatch. X-axis values greater than zero here indicate late breeding relative to the food peak, while values less than zero indicate early breeding. Thus, females breeding late relative to the food peak were more likely to fledge zero offspring compared to females who were better matched with the food peak. Among those females that did manage to fledge some chicks, those breeding late relative to the food peak fledged fewer chicks than those breeding at the same time as, or slightly earlier than, the food peak. Finally, the probability of recruitment also showed a strong negative quadratic relationship with individual mismatch. The net consequences of these effects at the individual level, in combination with the fact that average mismatch has increased steadily over time, is that directional selection for earlier breeding has intensified across the study period. Next, we looked at the effects of mismatch at the population level. This graph shows the effect of population average mismatch on the annual mean number of fledglings per female, with the data points here representing different years. 
Points to the left of the zero line indicate years where breeding was on average earlier than the food peak, while points to the right of the line indicate years where breeding was late relative to the food peak. The negative linear relationship here was weak, although statistically significant. In contrast, there was no significant across-year relationship between annual mean recruitment probability and population mismatch. The net result is that the annual mean number of recruits per female, the vital rate that most strongly influences population dynamics in the species, shows only a weak and marginally significant relationship with population mismatch. In summary, we found that the between-year effects of mismatch on population mean vital rates are much weaker than the within-year effects on individual fitness. These results are important because they tell us that trophic mismatches due to climate change can have strong consequences for patterns of phenotypic selection on the one hand, but on the other hand, these need not necessarily translate into strong consequences for population demography.